Hey everybody, welcome back to Cade Maid. In my previous upload, I shared with you a visual tour of this old kit garage, which I turned into this really fun and unique hangout spot. Check out that video for the full tour, but it just kind of provided some images of how I turned the space into the space that it currently stands as. And with that, it was a wonderful space, but it really wasn't that useful and it didn't really make sense entirely to have so many hangout spaces outside, especially since we have a front porch and a back patio and otherwise. Um, but I thought I'd share with you a little bit of that and these couple of photos from the 1950s that was given by the previous owner. Um, but things needed to change and now it's going to become a really wonderful potting shed, which I can't wait to share with you the process of. So here we go. Ooh. Okay. Well, here is the, here is the garden house. The garden house, the potting shed, it needed to be cleaned out. So I opened up the window and just started cleaning up all of the little messes. I really did clear it out. There was a ton of stuff in there. And I was anticipating being able to clean it out, clean it up, and then move in with all of the potting and guarding materials that I wanted to move in with. And you'll be, you'll hear me in a moment explaining to my partner, Mike, all of my plans for what I was going to do with the space because it was in pretty good shape and could have been used as is. It's like you have a little table to work on. Okay. You could also do it like this. Uh-huh. A couple of chairs would get the top on it and some a bottom place. So I have this idea that I could... This is a garden house, right? And I just don't think it's going to be really that effective in being a garden house when it's just dark and it doesn't feel like you could even have plants in here to begin with. I'm thinking about putting in clear corrugated plastic panels. Clear on the top, keep a little bit of the original corrugated roof there to there. Keeping that top piece and just you'd see light in there right now. It'd be glowing. But then you have light coming in and then this thing open. And in that case, you know what I would do. I would paint all of this white. Everything would be white in here. So this thing would sing and I can hang flowers from the little rafters on hooks. So I'm gonna have to take everything out of here in that case when I do that, but. I ended up going to Menards for these pieces and it's actually fiberglass, corrugated fiberglass, which was a little bit more opaque and they had all the accessories there. I thought the clear would get scratched and scuffed and look a little bit dirtier. It ended up being an excellent choice. I am being cautious here, by the way. This is cut together and it makes it look like I'm going very fast. I was being a lot more methodical than it appears. <laughs> Now, in this part, I'm not being as methodical. I'm probably being a little reckless, but do use caution, please, when you're doing stuff, especially on roofs, no matter how short or tall they are. <laughs> you can imagine how encouraging it was to finally see the space brighten up. I mean, just the reveal of this was so amazing to me and it made it all worth it. I did anticipate keeping the canvas, which is why I left it on the rest of that at first, but I ended up taking it all down because it appeared as though this was all going to paint up very quickly and easily. I do do a lot of these projects alone and I legitimately wish there were two of me sometimes because I have a hard time asking for help. And for that reason, stuff like as you will see, it happens all the time with me. I have never worked with this material, and although I aimed to do a really fantastic job getting this new corrugated fiberglass roof on, I'm not experienced in this, and it just involved putting on a lot of caulk at that point to make sure that it wasn't going to leak. So 
I caulked and it was beginning to rain and I was very concerned that it was going to be filled with water in the morning. Okay, it rained like all night. I barely got this cocked. Seeing a lot of schmutz. I'm not seeing, I'm seeing a little, I don't even know if that's fresh. Okay, there's a little, little moisture there. Is there anything on here? No. Barely got it on, it's not even entirely on. And it already has very few, very few leaks. Okay, well, I think it's time to get to work in a minute. I'm gonna go have a smoothie. I did buy one gallon of paint, which I used on the Luan and on the walls for this. Um, it was just essentially an interior eggshell and it covered up the Luan incredibly well. On the ceiling, I decided to use old primer, not new primer, not anything special. And it really made the whole process take a really long time. Had I just gotten another gallon of paint, I think the ceiling would have covered up a lot more quickly. Um, if I did have a sprayer, I would have sprayed it. I would have sprayed it twice and it would have been done in a day, but I ended up actually painting this for about four and a half days. And uh, I didn't even anticipate working on this entire project for more than four days. So it was a process. I made pretty good progress on the ceiling yesterday and it's just needing one more coat on the corrugated roof and then one more coat of actually trim paint for all of those pieces right there. I decided to fill in these spaces with some extra two by fours. And so I'm gonna do that first and finish um, just getting everything kind of closed before I do the final paint. So this is the topper for the potting shed workbench. I had used it previously on the same table in my studio and just used a hollow core door, painted it white, and then trimmed it off with a few pieces of board. And it ended up getting dirty a lot of the time, so I had this contact paper, this white marble contact paper that I used in the kitchen in a very small area. And I thought it would be perfect for putting in, in here just as a topper, it's wipeable. It will last a little while, can't withstand hard use, but it definitely will work and it will obviously look a lot better than a stained white weird textured door. I'm just making sure that the bubbles are getting out of it and just peeling away the bottom layer and letting that contact paper just lay flat on that surface. And then of course making the, the, sure the edges are down as possible, but if you've used contact paper you know it flips up, which is why I put the trim boards on the sides of it. If you have like gaps you can just your less used side of it, just patch that in with your extra uh, remnants from your contact paper. It worked great. Anytime I am doing a project with wood outside, I treat it with this Penafin product. It's really great. It's a penetrating oil finish, so it doesn't peel and lift. It simply just penetrates into the wood and has to be reapplied maybe every two years, but it's fantastic for fences, outdoor furniture, any of your outdoor wood projects. The clouds cleared, the rain stopped, and I was able to stop moving things indoor and then outdoor and then in back again. I was able to move it out so I could finish painting. And dear friends, I painted this for what felt like a week. It's very difficult to get something so dirty, completely white, but I did do it. And then I was able to 
clear it out, clean it up, and then paint the baseboards and the floor. And I'm using a color here called Cherokee Red, and I'm not even using a floor paint, I'm using a very, very good exterior trim paint, and which is what I used before when it was green. As you can see, it holds up pretty well, and I can repaint the floors if I need to, but it's not heavy use, so I'm not too concerned about that. I do like red floors in basements and porches and in my potting shed. It's very warm and it doesn't look dirty as much, I guess. I don't know. Even though this project took a little bit longer than I anticipated, I love process. I love making things happen. I love making things beautiful. And it's an amazing challenge to just make something great, which you didn't expect doing at all. So this table used to be our kitchen table and it was given to us by Joshua. Hey, Joshua, thank you so much for the table. I had covered it in Mexican oil cloth for a few years and I, un I took off the Mexican oil cloth just to see what I could do to the surface of this using a 150 grit sandpaper. It made this table so beautiful. I never anticipated it would look so great. There's the rain. Oh my gosh, I literally, literally finished sanding this down right before the rain. Again, more rain, always more rain this week. So just buffing in a little bit of that penafin again, look at the result. What the heck? That's Im that's unbelievable. It's almost too good to be in the potting shed, in my opinion. It's a beautiful, sunny Monday morning. And yesterday, got the little seating arrangement pulled together and a couple of shelves up. Started pulling that together. And now I am going to go to the garden shop. When I said garden shop there, I meant I went to the tropical. Hey Steve, I went to the tropical plant wholesaler that we happen to have within four miles of our house. And this place is unbelievable. It's one of my favorite places to go ever. It's almost better than the botanical gardens because I get to buy things. I like to go into the jungle to make sure I get the best plant. This place is amazing, it smells so good. Evidently, my eyes were bigger than my vehicle, but I managed to get all of the plants. These aren't even plants for this project, but it was too good to not leave in. <laughs> this is my little uh, spool invention that I used with an old curtain rod and some brackets and a few old wood joists as a top. Sometimes I'm working really quickly and so I don't have drill bits around so if I'm drilling a pilot hole I'll just use a screw and in this case I just use the screw, put it in, put it out, and then put my eye hook in the screw hole. It works just great. Maybe in another video I'll share with you how I style a space but it's such a process that I don't know if I could have taped it as well as done it efficiently, so I'm just going to hand you the reveal and I hope you enjoy it.
I am so encouraged and grateful that I have this potting shed. This transformation went so much better and was so much more than I ever anticipated it was going to be. And now we have a screened in porch with a table to hang out with friends and have meals. As a creative, this is just an incredibly well-lit space. I can do my pots in here. I can do small, simple crafts in here. I could even paint in here if I wanted to, and just even though I've done enough painting for now. But this is a really, really neat multi-use spot, and it is very, very cool to have it. It was not that expensive to do this. It's going to get so much use this year, and I'm excited that I have this space, and now I can start doing all of my smaller potting projects and just really working with it. And one final thing I just want to say, thank you so much for watching my video, watching my other videos. It's, it's my love. I love to be creative, and I am really enjoying sharing it. So thank you so much for watching this, and we will see you next time on Cade Made. Take care of yourselves, get out there, get creative, and we'll see you soon.